As humans, we're totally hardwired to find faces fascinating, and that's why so many people want to paint portraits. But because we know human faces so well, it's really hard to paint what's actually there rather than what our brain keeps telling us is there. So I'm in the middle of a 30 day painting challenge. I'm painting 30 faces in 30 days and I'm doing it with Museum by Sketchy which is an online app. It's a bit like Instagram for faces. Really enjoyable so far because we have a different face each day and people are sharing their tips and different styles so I'm certainly learning a lot and really enjoying it. I'm up to day seven. This was day seven, poor thing. I'm not sure I did her any justice but day eight I would love to show you how I go about painting a portrait with a purple underpainting. So here's this lovely face that we're going to be painting and what's really attractive about it is like this really warm colour over here, the real oranges and yellows coming over versus sort of the cooler colours this side. I've got a piece of £140 knot surface, that's cold press surface, watercolour paper. It's just A4 size, it's not very big. And I've done an outline sketch. I'm a great believer in using shortcuts if you can. So I have got this light box and I simply trace the outline like you that. You could use tracing paper, you could go graphite paper, bright sunny day, just put it against a window and trace it or use your computer screen as long as it's not a touch screen obviously. You're just trying to get an outline and let's just switch that off outline and some of the contours in and it's absolutely not cheating Vermeer who wasn't a bad portrait painter he used the camera obscura Joshua Reynolds he used a camera obscura so if it saves you time and lets you enjoy the painting that's great of course if you're confident with doing freehand sketches that's brilliant and it's a, a great thing to do but when you're happy with that we are going to do an underpainting in purple, which is really counterintuitive, but has really great results. So we are basically following the tonal map of the face and hair in purple. And this acts just as you do in oil painting as a grease side, it's a gray underpainting in oil painting, but here we are going to use a purple underpainting and the reason for this is that it will neutralize out when we put any uh, yellows or oranges on top and if you think about it purple and yellow are complementary colors so they neutralize out to a brown gives you great skin tones with a really interesting undertone of purple so i'm just softening the edges of the hair using about a size 10 brush and I am not thinking, oh, I'm painting an eye and a cheek and a whatever. I am thinking, where are the lights and the darks? How can I join those shadows into big shapes? Just paint entirely what you see. If you can't see it, don't paint it. If you see it, paint it. I'm looking, there's a lot of highlights here, so I need to keep those. I don't want to go too mad with the purple because this uh, handsome chap does not want to end up totally purple. So I'm looking at these shadows, shadow patterns. So for example, this shadow comes across the nose. There's a highlight under it and it comes down to under this eye but at the same time, it extends across the top of the eyelid, all in a joined on across the eyebrow there. And then there's a shadow that comes down and joins here. I'm deliberately using a larger brush so that I don't get caught up in doing detail at this point. I'm looking at, there's a highlight in that eye, so I'm trying to leave that. No highlight in that eye loads of shadow there can't really see the white of this eye that side so if i can't see it i am not painting it i do want to keep some smooth edges not anything too harsh at this point 
So with a damp brush, I can just go and soften edges. And I'm going to come across this lovely cheekbone here. Look at that shape all the way down the cheek. Let's get a darker area in for that beard. I'm not worrying about bristles etc but I might leave a few highlights to give a little bit of texture there. If you lose a light area just use a damp brush and pull that out. Starting to, to form that, that grease eye underpainting which will be the basis of our whole portrait because watercolour is transparent so anything you put on will shine through subsequent layers but because it acts like stained glass. You can layer colours and they will optically mix and produce the most gorgeous colours as you layer one on top of the other. And that is what we are doing here. I need to darken some bits and as I say must really resist the temptation of going over the top with my tone. I need to also be aware of what is drying and what isn't. I'll go to a slightly finer brush because I do want to get that structure of the, the eye really in properly. And again I'm just trying to connect shapes and shadows rather than painting separate features. I'm really trying to focus on tone, large shapes, shadows. You're going to have to trust me on this because I know this looks really weird at the moment, you know, and you'll be thinking, purple, really? But it works. Deepening that shadow between the lips. That's always a really dark area on any face you know the, the the irises and pupils nostrils but the shadow between the lips is probably about the darkest area and then of course the shadow under the bottom lip as well top lip goes in so the top lip is usually in shadow whereas the bottom lip sticks out more and therefore catches the light and it's somehow sort of counterintuitive I think we think well the top lip's on top so it must get more light than the bottom lip but it doesn't work that way if you look. You need to let that dry and that sets that colour so that it won't move and the other good thing that diox purple is a really staining colour so it shouldn't shift. So I've just stuck that down because I suddenly realised I hadn't taped it to my board and I thought that actually gives more chance of me not moving it off camera. This is now dry and in this layer I'm going to use some burnt sienna and wash it over the left of the face and you can see how that starts to neutralise that purple and stop this lovely man looking too crazy. Now we talked about the, the warm colours here to the, the left, which is where I'm applying the sienna. I'm also going to drop in some Quin Gold. And again, that just knocks that purple back a bit. I just take that straight up into the hair because one of the big dangers is painting the hair and the face as separate entities and you end up with your face looking a bit like, I don't know, Lego man with sort of the hair that you just sort of clip on and off. And burnt sienna and purple make a beautiful brown which starts to build the skin tones. I'm not just going over the purple, I'm also going over some of the areas that I left as white and some of the purple will be left untouched 
say at the edge of the highlight here because I can see a lot of purple in this skin. We talked about the warm colours here so I'm just dropping in a little bit of cadmium red into his cheek where I can see lovely warmth there and probably up here on the temples that's probably too much. We know that watercolour will dry lighter but um, I don't want it to look like he's been hit over the head, do I? So I've got a little bit of perlin maroon that's lurking on my palette from a previous project. Or say something like this, which is a little bit of Queen Magenta and just pop that into his lips because they're quite that's quite a cool red through there. Around the forehead there's quite a highlight. Now I start to look more closely. I'm actually seeing that as quite a purple highlight. It's certainly not white. So I may just grab a smidge of my purple. Get that in there. And again, just if you lose a bit of your highlight, take that damp brush and lift it back out. So this side of the face we identified right at the beginning was actually cooler. So we need to make sure we reflect that to some of our colours. His neck here, there's quite a lot of cool pink. I'm, I'm changing to a smaller brush now. Just gonna strengthen some areas where I can see more of the burnt sienna and now we need to dry this again. We're going to move on to some darks so I have got a bit of a, a warm sepia here and I've got a bit of Prussian blue there which I've put the, the warm sepia in too so that will make a good dark. And again we do not want this hair to be solid. It's, we want it to have the colours shining through and for it to, to have life and volume and texture. So I'm mixing some blue, some of that um, yeah, warm sienna and letting those mix on the surface. So just as before, even though now I am starting to think, oh, I'm painting an eyebrow or, or whatever, I do need to look for those shadow shapes and how to join them again because that eyebrow goes straight into that really dark shadow and into the top of his eyelid so let's get that iris really beautifully dark really looking and seeing what colors we can see and what we can pull out to make this as interesting as possible so I'm in no way trying to do every hair of his sort of goatee beard. But I'm just trying to give an impression of what, what's going on there. And I really can't see an awful lot of distinguishing between his chin and some of this neck. So if I can't see it, I really mustn't paint it. quite sure what he's wearing but I can see some sort of ribbed marking so let's just pull a little bit of colour to create some clothing. We'll let that dry again. Right now it's time to think about anything that we want to lift soften his hairline for example and things like that and what colours do we want to intensify so I'm going back in with some burnt sienna just to intensify the hue 
a little further. Realised I've got the shape of this ear totally wrong, so I'm just going to sort that out. Just in case you've been shouting at your computer screen or your, your phone screen, sort out the ear. There you go. I just need to stop fiddling. I'm not sure I've done this very handsome chap um, <laughs> many favours. But there you go. I wanted to show you how that lovely purple underpainting gives a structure that holds the rest of the, the picture together. And though it's really counterintuitive, it actually works. And it works on white skins, black skins, whatever skins. You get that structure from the, the purple underpainting. You then neutralise it with some of the other colours that you place on top and build up those layers of transparency, making sure that you dry in between. And therefore you get this lovely glint and glow coming through into the final painting. Because after all, there is no such thing as skin colour. So all that remains to be done is to stick uh, my, my man into my album and please wish me luck with the next, what, 22 days? 